Hello, people. So, if anyone is joining, um, today is episode three of Spilling the TikTok Tea, and I'm just about to invite Essentials by Nature, who is our guest for today. So, I've just sent her an invite, hopefully, that'll work. Um, so basically today is episode three of Spilling the TikTok Tea, which is where we go live with another small business, uh, high relationship coach, Irina. Uh, yeah, so we go live with another small business and we basically share how you can grow your small business as well. Invite. Uh, so today our guest is... Oh, there we go. I think this will work. Hi, Jill. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can oh. you hear me? I don't know why you can't see me, though. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you, but not see you. Um, there we go. <laughs> Much better. So, welcome. So, yeah, I was just explaining to everyone what the series is. So, um, we have a small business on each week, sharing tips on how they've used TikTok to benefit their business. Um, so, I've basically got a list of questions to ask you. Um, awesome. And then if you've got any questions to ask me, you can ask me. And then as we go, we'll just keep an eye on the comments. And if anyone has any questions, we can kind of jump in and answer those questions as well. Um, so to begin, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. <clears throat> My name is Jill and I, I'm a nurse as well. And I started a business um, six years ago now um, and I wanted to create like all natural products because both my kids have really bad allergies and asthma. So I wanted to create products that they could use that were safe, that didn't have any like fillers, parabens, toxic chemicals. Um, so it really started out as just a hobby that I was um, kind of just doing at home in my free time. And then all of a sudden it kind of like organically grew into this business. And now we um, have our products in over 120 retailers and um, we sell online. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of like, came from a hobby and grew into this business that I had never um, planned on. <laughs> oh, amazing. So when did you actually start TikTok? When did you first begin? Um, I started TikTok, I think last year. Um, it was never something that I really knew about. And then my kids are like, hey, mom, do you know you should be on TikTok? <laughs> so then I started a TikTok. Um, and it's been kind of slow, like slow and steady, I feel like. Yeah. Um, but I think all social media is like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, just saying hello to Janine, Danielle, uh, Gary. Thanks for everyone for joining. Um, so, yes, so you've got about 17,000 followers on TikTok, which is really good for a year of, of posting. Um, mm -hmm. And when did you actually start your business? Has that been longer? Yeah, I started the business in 2015. Oh, amazing. So the last year, you know, has that been kind of beneficial for you know, having the TikTok. Yeah, definitely. Um, when I first started, I feel like I didn't, I didn't really understand TikTok and I was kind of using it similar to Instagram. Um, once I kind of realized that TikTok is totally different, um, I think that's when I saw some growth and I started to see yeah. um, what TikTok could actually do for my business. Um, so I would say like the most growth has happened probably in the last like six months. Yeah. Um, so have you got a social media strategy at all for TikTok? Is there anything that you do specifically to to kind of get those followers, get the views, things like that? I've tried a few things, but honestly, um, I kind of just wing it. <laughs> I kind of just post like whatever I'm feeling that day. And I think that that's, I mean, maybe not the best strategy as far as like a marketing perspective goes, but I feel like it's authentic and organic. So um that I'm not posting something that's not not real um I do have someone who helps me with TikTok um and she's amazing she's a lot funnier than I am <laughs> so any of like the funnier trends she kind of does those <laughs> yeah um so do you think kind of you know obviously maybe not having a specific strategy but is there a certain um you know, where you think of things, how do you kind of come up with your content ideas? Um, you know, is there anything that you do specifically to generate those ideas? So for whatever reason, whenever I post about our magnesium spray, that just goes crazy. So 
I pretty much post about that and our shower steamers and like you'll see on my feed like that's what I post the most about because that's what people seem interested in so I just try to like make changes to those posts every time and like whatever did well I'll repost or I'll um you know change it just a little bit and make it a little bit different and like reuse the content so I do reuse a lot of content because why not it's what's doing well yeah that's something that we always like massively recommend to people like testing different styles of content testing different topics or you know specific mm -hmm. product videos and then finding what's working for you and what actually performs well and then you can mm -hmm. just recreate that content and um, whether it be taking that original video and like reposting it and repurposing it across different platforms or taking a similar style and tweaking it a little bit or the same hook things like that and mm -hmm. that always works really well and is definitely something that we recommend and do ourselves yeah you guys always have really good tips <laughs> i definitely follow along <laughs> thanks um callum who is like the the boss of morgan brandon is currently sending <clears throat> from Santa's Elves, so thanks Cal. Don't know what that is, but thank <laughs> you. Um, so some of your videos have got like hundreds of thousands of, of views. Um, is there anything that you've kind of found works best for those videos? Magnesium. <laughs> it's literally when I post about magnesium spray and especially when I post about it using my kids. Um, I think that that reaches a lot of people because um, and I try to like be very careful when I'm using my kids in my um, TikTok, but um, mostly I just use their feet. <laughs> but um, I think that that's relatable and the things that I'm posting about, not only like as a business owner, but as a mother myself, I think that there's lots of moms on TikTok. And so they're seeing that and they're like, okay, well, I, my kid struggles with that too. Like I could, I could do this. I could use this. So I think like being relatable is what makes those posts do really well. Yeah, a hundred percent. From what I've seen as well on them videos, you tend to start the video with addressing that initial pain point. So you know, mm -hmm. starting the video with the the issue that the children might you know might have with like eczema or you know things like yeah. that, and then you go in with kind of the value, how to help, and then yeah. position your products as their solution, which is like the ultimate formula essentially. Yeah. Uh, for you know creating good content so that's definitely working well for you guys and um definitely something to to recommend to other small businesses who are watching mm -hmm. yeah I think that like that's the thing about TikTok is just really um using what works for you and, and what works for you is going to be totally different than what works for someone else and I think we and I'm bad at this too I get caught up in like watching other people's TikToks and I'm like oh but like that was so good and then I'll try that and it totally flops for me so I think um like I know that it's really big right now to talk a lot on TikTok and make long yeah. videos and like be on there talking but anytime I post a video like that nobody watches it so I just don't do them so if I do you know the videos like you said where I'm explaining about magnesium why it works you know that seems to do well or if I do one where I'm talking in the background that does well but it's just, it's so hit and miss and just what works for me just doesn't work for someone else and vice versa. Yeah, and again, like, even though, as you said, like, there is a big push on creating that long form content, the talking videos, things like that, and it's kind of, like, speculated that TikTok are wanting people to do that more, but if that doesn't work for you and you're not seeing the results that way, there's no point putting your time and effort into a strategy that totally. isn't having an impact on your business so yeah. I think that's definitely a good like reminder for everyone watching if you know if you're trying to create content because you know the the marketing pages on TikTok are telling you that that's what you should be doing but it's not actually mm -hmm. for you then it's fine not to do that content and to totally. trial and error and find what does actually work for you uh, which is obviously what you're doing and which is why you've you know had the success that you have had so far um mm -hmm. do you ever go like live on TikTok doing anything like that? I have. Um the problem is I just don't have the time. Like um because we're just so busy, especially right now with the holidays, I just don't have that time to be on there. Um I think it's it's really good and it's a great way to connect with with people. Um and like the first couple of times I've, that I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I even talk about? And you really can talk about anything and people will just like pop on and ask random yeah. questions. So <clears throat> I think it's a great way to like connect with people, um, but it is very time consuming. And so I think 
if I had more time, I would probably do it more. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you've also got, like, well, obviously you've also got Instagram, um, but you're mm -hmm. on about 15,000 followers on Instagram. So mm -hmm. how have you, like, since when did you start Instagram? Was that an earlier platform <clears throat> before TikTok? Yeah, I started Instagram probably um, right around when I started my business. So Instagram is definitely slower as far as growth goes. Like, it takes a lot longer to see the um, numbers that you see on TikTok. Um, and I find with Instagram too, there's a lot of follow and follow. Um, so you do see that decline of followers. Um, yeah, I, I think it's harder to grow on Instagram than it is on TikTok for sure. Um, and it's such a different style on Instagram. Like it's all pretty pictures and everyone wants it's very aesthetic, very, yeah. you know, pretty and pleasing. Whereas TikTok, you know, it doesn't need to be like that. Yeah, hundred percent. And how do you kind of like repurpose your content across? Do you <clears throat> do you post reels on TikToks? Do you like how do you um, repair? Um, I do a, a little bit, but not a whole lot to be honest. I think um, what does well for me on TikTok does not do well for me on Instagram. So when I'm doing reels, I do tend to do a lot more like like I said, like aesthetically pleasing, really pretty, really like. Um, yeah, I don't really do like the trending ones. They don't do well for me. Um, so whenever it's um, a reel, it's going to be like prettier. And then on TikTok, it's going to be more like funny, nitty gritty, like, you know, like people are just different on TikTok and, and than they are on Instagram. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, different <laughs> audiences are on different platforms, different demographics. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of tricky finding out what works best for which platform. Um but you know it's still kind of good to to have those crossovers and to to be able to post you know the more aesthetic things on you know reels and trends on yeah. TikTok and things like that and um, so you're kind of like meeting the needs of both of those demographics mm -hmm. um so what yeah. would you say your top three tips would be for growing a following and creating that that high quality content on TikTok yeah sorry yeah um I would say uh probably just like it's really easy to get caught up in like watching all the other videos and watching all of the um like TikTok gurus tell you what to do and what not to do and I think that it's important to like learn from that but also you really just need to do what works for you and like be true to yourself I actually saw a post a couple weeks ago where someone was saying that um if you post what like is important to you and what works for you and like who you are, people will see that and it will shine through. But if you're just posting to post and you're posting like trends all the time or like kind of like you're just like wasting your posts, like people can tell. So you just need to be authentic and true to who you are. And it's not always about the views and it's not always about going viral. It's about being true to your brand or true to whatever your your purpose of TikTok may be. Um, so I think that it's so easy to get caught up in that, but you just need to stick with like what actually works for you. Yeah, a hundred percent. So many people that, you know, it could be clients, followers, you know, people come to us and say, how do I go viral? And that's like the main thing. But in reality, the virality is the, you know, a lesser significant part of TikTok. Totally. You know, obviously if you get that, you know, if you get a lot of views and it hits the right audience, that's great. And it gets your brand out there and it's really good for that brand awareness and things. But the main thing on TikTok is to build a community and the way yes. to do that is to be yourself and to be authentic. Absolutely. You know, yeah. create those customer connections. Yeah, and honestly, going viral isn't as much fun as it would appear to be because whenever you have a viral video, you get some mean people on there. <laughs> Like I've had a couple of viral videos where people have been really mean and I find it interesting because that doesn't happen on, on Instagram. Like it, it seems to be that TikTok brings out this like genre of people <laughs> that feel okay to say things that are so inappropriate. So I think yeah. like, yes, everyone has this goal of going viral, but it can also be like very hard on your, like on your soul <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think a big proportion of, of why that is is because like because TikTok does have a what like a larger ability to get your videos viral, more so than right. Instagram. Um 
full-time job hiding. It totally is full-time <laughs> hiding comments. I know I have to like delete them. <laughs> yeah, no, we always seem to get hate on, on Man and Callum's lives. <laughs> um, but yeah, because TikTok's got that ability to, to go viral and to push your content to a wide group of people, even the slight kind of miss uh you know misinterpretation from tiktok to push your content to the wrong demographic can have a significant effect on your you know on the people that actually find that video and if that's not the right demographic if those people aren't your potential customers or people that are interested in your niche then it's not going to have a positive impact on your business which a lot of people kind of forget about that downfall to Mm -hmm. um you know, to go and viral. So it is really important to create the community and to build a slow following that actually care about your content and that you can, you know, talk to, you can, you know, connect with. Um, and, and that's what's seen was to have the better potential with then generating those people becoming customers and things like that. So um, I think that's definitely something that a lot of people forget about when going viral. Yeah. And a lot of people... Yeah, it's not all it's made out to be (laughs) yeah yeah it's definitely something that you know it can have a really good impact on your business but it also can not have an impact at all Um, and that's why it is really important to make sure that your content is always completely relevant to your target audience Mm -hmm. and doesn't kind of sway away from that which is why we you know say that having a specific niche and specific target audience that you're pushing your content to is really important Mm mm-hmm um so next question how often yep. do you post on tiktok um i try to post every day um yep. sometimes i'll post twice a day if i have like something to say <laughs> if i'm like oh you know i really want to post this um for whatever reason i feel like thursdays just are not my day so i don't post on thursdays because they just never get any views um and then i find like sunday nights are fantastic for me so i kind of try to like post whenever um I find I get the best views. So I try to watch my analytics. Um, it seems like for me, most people are on there at like 7 p.m., 8 p.m. So I try to post like in the evenings. Um, but I mean, it's it's different every day. So if I don't have time to post at 8 p.m., then I'm going to post whenever I have time. So I yeah. do try to watch analytics and do that. But like, it also has to be like what works in, with my schedule. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And do you kind of like batch create your content or do you just kind of go as you, you know, do it as you go? So I have um, someone who helps me with it and she does a lot of batch stuff for me. Um, And then I'll do the odd like, oh, I have this idea. I'm just going to do it today. Um, But so a little bit of both, I would say. Yeah, that's good. Um. So whilst we're kind of chatting, um, if anyone has got any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments section. Um, and, you know, if, if anyone else is a small business, let us know what you do, uh, what you sell. And, yeah, get chatting in the comments. Um, so have you got any questions for us, Jill, about TikTok? Yeah. Um, I would say, what would you say is the best um, way to, like, engage? Like, I know, like, with Instagram, like, you know, you should like go in and look at your followers and look at the people you're following and like comment on their photos and stuff like that. Would you say with TikTok, that's the, you should do the same thing? Um, yeah, I think interacting with people is really important, um, especially kind of making sure that you reply to every comment. Um, if anyone ever asks a question to video reply to that, um, that's something that a lot of people forget about and, and kind of neglect, but mm-hmm. it's a really good way to answer people's questions um there's a book that me and Cal- well, Calvin's read I've heard about uh, called They Ask They Answer which is essentially the concept of the questions that your target audience are asking they should all be answered the book the book was originally kind of more for SEO on websites but now mm-hmm. that people are using TikTok as a search engine and um, mm-hmm. if people are asking questions in the comments you know the more that you're answering those questions and um, kind of helping people addressing different like frequently asked questions and things like that um, the more beneficial it is for you and them because it positions yourself as more credible uh, trustworthy and uh, like you know that you know what you're actually talking about um, and then it also ranks high for, for TikTok SEO so it's kind of a win-win so I would definitely recommend video replying to comments um, interacting with others that are in your niche and your target audience so 
it's probably not going to really be that beneficial if you're commenting on a load of other like skincare brands. But if you find your potential customers and or your existing customers as well, and you're interacting back with them, that's really beneficial as well. Um, if also people ever create a TikTok about your products or about your services, mm-hmm. make sure that you're reposting that video, mm-hmm. um, you know, asking them to send it over without the watermark and kind of maybe putting your own tweak on it um, and engaging back with that is really important too. What are your thoughts on um, like influencers and um, like user user generated content? Like I would say we get at least four or five messages a day asking to work together. Like let's collab, you know, like, or like the one liners being like, I love your jewelry brand. (laughs) And I'm like, Oh, okay. (laughs) But um, how beneficial would you say working with other creators on TikTok is? And I think kind of the user generated content side of things seems to be becoming more kind of popular on TikTok and it works well because when people are posting about your brand a little bit more um, authentically and, you know, mm-hmm. without it being the business itself promoting the products, um, it kind of shows people that they can trust your brand, people like it and use it. So I think it definitely does work on TikTok. Um and I wouldn't kind of say no no to, to doing that. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, the main thing with finding user-generated content or influencers is just to make sure that your target audiences do actually align because that's something that we see quite often. Um, you know, your your business could be like, I don't know, something like, I can't think off the top of my head, but, you know, if someone's business is um, aimed at, like, 20 year old girls for example and they pay an influencer who's like a mom influencer who's attracting 50 year old women Mm -hmm. then you know it might not work and the might the crossover might not really you know happen so I think making sure that your target audiences are the exact same or very similar is very important obviously if you want to get that kind of impact and the results from it Mm mm-hmm We've had a couple really successful, um, like we've worked with a couple influencers on on Instagram more so, but um, recently I worked with a nurse on TikTok and that was kind of cool because I'm a nurse as well. So I felt like we had like so much in common and she really promoted our products really well. And I think um, promoting them to like her audience made sense because it's a lot of nurses and it was a product that like would be good for a nurse, right? So I think that that was really successful, but I think you're right. You have to make sure that the person you're working with has like the same audience that you're yeah. wanting to target. Yeah, definitely. I think when you are using, you know, when the audiences do align well, then it can be really good. It can be great for your business and for, you know, mm-hmm. that crossover, um, not just promoting your brand, but also, you know, the person that you're working with as well. Yeah. So it can be, you know, really beneficial and I definitely recommend it if, people like had budgets for that and were Mm -hmm. wanting to kind of reach more people it's definitely a a good way to do so um especially with tiktok and i know that kind of doesn't have tiktok shop but in the uk for those watching from the uk um we've got like tiktok shop and creators can tag brand products in their videos now so that's a really good way to promote your products as well yeah but unfortunately that's only of course not. <laughs> you couldn't choose, yeah. Um, but definitely something to consider for the UK watches. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll get that here. Yeah, hopefully. I think it will get rolled out because it's available in the UK, US, and like China and, and kind of those those areas, I think. Um, We're always behind over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so fingers crossed that it's mm-hmm. rolled out for, for everyone soon. Um <laughs> But yeah, so what would you say your kind of number one tip for small businesses in general is? So kind of taking it away from TikTok, just for for any small businesses that that are watching, how would you kind of, you know, what would you give to them to recommend, like to motivate them and things like that? Um, I think just um, being like really true to who you are and what you want. um, I think that's really important and not getting caught up in the, you know, competitiveness of it and like 
only you can do what you do. And I think that that's really important to remember because, you know, we see so much in our faces on social media of like other people's successes. And you have to always remember that that's just a snippet. So you're just seeing one picture, one video, um, and that's not necessarily real life. So it might look to you like someone else is like crazy, hugely successful. And again, that's just a snippet. So maybe they're having a bad day too. Like you just never know. So I think that focusing on um, other people's successes is can be hard as a small business owner. So you have to just um, focus on what works for you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can hear my dog. It's like crazy. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Um, so would you say, would you prefer Instagram or TikTok, which, which is your favorite? Mm, that's tough. I would say probably Instagram, just because I've been doing it for longer. And yeah. I've built like a really big community on Instagram and I feel like I get better engagement um, because it's like my followers that know me and have been with me since the beginning. Um, and when I look, so we use Shopify and when we look at Shopify and it shows like where our sales are coming from, it's usually Instagram. That being said, TikTok can be really fun and I feel like you're targeting like a much younger generation on TikTok so I think, um, and, and also like a larger audience, like I feel like a lot more people see you on TikTok than on Instagram. So I think that that part is kind of fun. But yeah, Instagram, I don't know. I think it's just because I've been doing it for so much longer. Yeah. And how do you kind of manage like your time? Because we kind of put most of our effort into TikTok. I'd say 80% of our marketing efforts go into TikTok on social media. Mm -hmm. And then the other 20% will be a few Instagram posts, Facebook, Facebook groups. Um, yeah. and, and we tend to find they works best when you have got that one platform that you're focusing on more. Yeah. So how do you kind of like manage the time? So I definitely think I put more effort into Instagram um, right now. Um, over the summer, I was definitely focused on TikTok. And I feel like over the summer, TikTok was really, really good for me. And then the algorithm changed. And I'm sure a lot of people saw um, sort of a decline in their their views. And, you know, everyone's getting stuck at that 200 views. Um, and that's pretty common. And then with the change with, like, the SEO and, like, um, I think that that made a huge difference for me. So I think, yeah, I think that I kind of just shift. So, like, I'll spend a lot more time on Instagram when Instagram is working well. And then I'll spend a lot of time on TikTok when TikTok is working well. So it just depends on like what's happening with the algorithms. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned like TikTok SEO there. So what um, do you have like a strategy at all for that? Is there anything that you do for the SEO side of things? I just try to um, use like use it in my um, captions and like writing text on screen or like if I'm talking, I'll use the, um, the captions so that the words come on, like that kind of thing. Um, and then I try to like hashtag the best that I can, but I don't even know if that works. <laughs> um, so I, I don't have like a ton of time to like research all the new ways of TikTok. So I kind of just do like whatever I see you guys posting to do. <laughs> yeah, I think um, like with TikTok SEO, uh, the main thing is just to think about what your target audience is searching for. You know, mm -hmm. it might not even be on TikTok. It might be just in general, like on Google and right. things. Um, and then using those phrases in your hooks, you know, text on screen and the captions and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And the more, that's why, you know, when we said before about answering questions, the more questions that you're answering and using those searchable phrases that people might be searching for, the more beneficial it can be for your business. Right. Um, and like, I think a lot of small businesses and, you know, people in general forget that people, you know, consumers and users of TikTok won't be searching TikTok for specific, you know, products as such. They'll be searching right. for solutions that, you know, might have, you know, a different impact. So like tips for people with dry skin, you know, mm -hmm. they're not going to be searching an actual product name. Um, right. making sure that you're using phrases and keywords that people potentially are searching for um there's a website called answer the public which we use quite a bit for you know finding what people are searching for and um 
the best tip that I've found is when you search your industry or you know some sort of keyword that's relevant to your business on TikTok if you scroll down past the top four videos it's TikTok tells you what other people have searched for on TikTok that uses that keyword so using those I phrases yeah it's really good it's literally like my favorite thing but, um, <laughs> yeah so making sure that you're using those phrases in your videos using them as the hooks using them in the captions it's it's just really you know beneficial for your video to get that you know the most out of the growth potential right um, and with hashtags you said you know you know you don't know you know what to <laughs> kind of do with those yeah um like we recommend typically use them from five to ten hashtags um, since the character count has expanded to like 2,200, um, mm -hmm. I tend to go for like 10 more so now, but it used to be mm -hmm. five. Um, and using a mix between saturated hashtags and less saturated hashtags. So, you know, that could be like for us, hashtag TikTok for business has got like maybe a billion views. Right. But TikTok growth for small businesses might have 500,000 views. So kind of using both those hashtags that right. tell you know this is who my target audience are this is the content that i'm posting about and then tiktok can kind of work its magic work its magic right. Right. um but something that we always say not to do is if you're a small business um on tiktok uh don't post hashtag small business and don't try and reach other small businesses because you're then gonna attract people who you know are not necessarily your customers they might right. be the same as you and you know they're also a small business which is fine um you know and they could interact with you and and stuff like that but the odds of them actually converting into a customer is right. less than if you were using hashtags that focus on your actual target market so what would you say like for someone like me would be like an ideal hashtag um i think like obviously just a mix between the larger hashtags and smaller hashtags. So I'd have to look at the smaller ones, but kind of focusing on skincare, obviously with the target mm -hmm. audience of being, you know, I assume you'd probably target the parents of children, you know, yeah. other than children. So kind of using things like hashtag mum talk and things like that, mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of people search for and have a bit of a community right. in. Um, so yeah. you're telling TikTok, this is who our target audience are. You know, we want to push the content to this group of people. And right. then once they've found you, you can then provide the value. You can share the educational side of things. And then ultimately, mm -hmm. they could then potentially become a customer because you're reaching that specific target audience. Yeah. I think people love those, you know, TikToks that show like a routine and show how you're incorporating something into your daily life. So we try to do a lot of those. Like, how would you use this product every day in your daily life? Yeah, I think that that's, you know, what people want to see versus me just holding a product being like, here, use this, use this, right? Yeah, definitely. I think that's another thing that people kind of forget. Um, people try and show all the features of a product and they'll say, you know, this does X, Y, and Z and you yeah, know, it's pretty. But unless you're actually showing the benefits and how it works on someone and, you know, showing the product in use, that's what's yes. going to actually yeah. tap into the customer's emotions and make yeah. them think, oh, that would benefit me and help my daily yeah. life. So that's definitely something that we'd recommend and we yeah. you know, do for clients and things like that. Something too, like that I do is like, obviously we all scroll through TikTok and like it's research, right? But yeah. what, whatever, like what videos like captivate me and catch my attention, I try to like recreate those because if I am my target customer, so yeah. like if something is catching my attention, then that's what I want. So I really do try to like research that way and like, look and see what catches my attention and then try to recreate that yeah 100 percent. that's what we do as well like um i've had today as my batch creation day for tiktok so today i've just been filming tiktoks essentially um and so how i kind of do that is i'll spend an hour um in the morning looking through tiktok scrolling my fyp because obviously mm -hmm. the people that i'm engaging with are you know my target audience and others in my niche so right. you know, that gives a lot of inspiration and um, gives content ideas you know what hooks are people talking about what topics are people talking about mm -hmm. um, you know what's trending at the moment and then I'll make a list of all those like URL links um, 
and then kind of brainstorm my own content ideas on the side of that and then kind of find what works together how can I put my own spin on things and right. you know, things like that so uh, the research is actually key and it's so important um, and we've just kind of we've just released a content planner so it's like a way that people can can put all of those ideas into one page um, so I've been using that today and that definitely helps me and it's what we do for all of our clients to have like a set plan um, and, and yeah that's definitely something that I'd recommend do you kind of do you plan your content like properly or do you just kind of think oh that's a good idea I'll do that yeah no I don't plan at all which I mean I'm sure that I would do a bit better if I if I did but um, I think because like I don't have um, like I have someone that helps me a little bit, but I don't have anyone that like does my social media or like helps me with like the actual, you know, strategy and stuff. I just kind of do it myself. Um, it's like a time thing. So um, one of my like goals for the new year is really to like sit down and like um, strategize a bit better. Cause I think that it would actually save me more time if I actually like sat down and planned it out then I wouldn't be like, oh my God, what am I going to post today? Yeah, I think that's something that we, like, you know, I used to find like, oh, what can I post? And, you know, thinking, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but if you just wake up one day and, and you don't have like a set, you know, a set list of ideas, it can be hard to find those ideas and to really come up with them. So that's why I'd like recommend just kind of putting it on a piece of paper, yeah. developing some sort of strategy so you know exactly what you're going to be posting every week. If the video is about, was it magnesium, did you say? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so if those videos perform best, maybe out of the seven videos that you're posting in one week, four of them should be about that product. And, yeah. you know, the other three videos, what, what should they be about? What products do you want to push? What products you know, what to bestseller, what do you want to promote this month Um, and Mm -hmm. kind of strategically thinking about what you're actually posting and and coming up with like the hook for each video and and sound is good for each video. Um, You know, that's kind of what this content planner that we've just released is is all about, kind of taking it down, like stripping everything back and then building the content plan up. And Mm -hmm. then once you've found that content that works, like obviously you know what works for you, mm-hmm. you can take the concept of the video and tweak it slightly each yeah. week and, and, you know, use a different sound and use a different hook, um, yeah. position it in a different way. So it is really beneficial. Um, mm-hmm. So the Rose Bars just said, I used the content planner you created. It's so helpful. So thank you for the feedback on that. And I'm glad that you like it. Is it um, just on your website? Yeah, yeah, it's just, well, it's on our links page. Um, okay. You know, on, like, the TikTok links. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so that's that's kind of something that we've been promoting and pushing a lot because um, it's what we do for our clients. We have, like, a lot of coaching clients that mm-hmm. we provide, like, a, a content plan to each month, uh, each week, sorry, and that's the structure that we follow for that. So thought that it would be good to give that to small businesses to, to help them. I think it's really great that you guys um, post so much content that's so helpful. Like, I've been following you guys for, like, a while now. I think it started when you had the Facebook, um, and you, like, did, like, the month of content. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is so helpful (laughs) because it just gives you an idea and you don't have to think about it. And I think what's great is, like, that you just, like, really are promoting, like, community connection and, like, we're going to be here to help you grow. And you're not like asking for anything back. And I think that that's like, I think that's what this is all about. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's, that's exactly what we want to do on TikTok. And it's why we started the TikTok in the first place. Um, Like those people always say, Oh, why do you post so many tips for free when like, you know, isn't that your job? You meant to be getting paid for that. But it's like, you know, how would anyone know that we we can help someone if we don't help people from the start so it's it's right. kind of the way the way it's worked for us you know we enjoy doing these lives and doing you know the community stuff me and Cal go live every Thursday just to chat to people and to mm-hmm. help people and answer their questions so you know it's not about the you know the money side as such it's like oh we can actually help someone here and then if they become a client in a year's time that's great if they don't that's fine you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, yeah. 
So that's kind of the way we kind of go about TikTok, just to build that community and to build relationships with people. Yeah, because you just never know, especially like, you know, word of mouth, like, you know, maybe, for example, with your content create planner, I could be, you know, a friend could ask me, hey, I'm really struggling, I could tell them about it, because, you know, I saw it on here. So I think that that's important. It's like, yes, maybe you're giving all these tips, you know, for free, but then someone is going to tell someone else about it, and maybe they hire you. So I think, yeah. you know, I think that that's a really great thing to offer. Yeah, and I think it's the same with most businesses on TikTok. So like, you know, you guys posting like tips and educational content, you mm -hmm. know, all helping people in your business. Yeah community which could then result in, in people buying the products and you know things like that so I think it's just the key thing for TikToks is to build a community and people right. people need to build a community if they want to have success from the platform yeah I think the three things I that um you're supposed to post about are like educational entertainment and I can't remember what the other one was but would you say that that is pretty true that you're wanting to like either entertain people or educate people yeah definitely I think what we say is it the content either got to be educational entertaining or like engaging and yes, all engaging. Possible. <laughs> yeah so, um obviously with TikTok you don't want to overly promote products and to become mm -hmm. sales because people don't want to buy from businesses they want to buy from people and they want to yes see yeah the product's going to help them um mm -hmm. So educating, providing value to people, helping people um, on kind of one end of, you know, one end of TikTok. And then on the other ha hand is the trends, the entertainment, uh, making people laugh, smile, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And finding that kind of in-between balance to keep people engaged whilst maybe doing that slightly, you know, less entertaining things like the promotional side of the videos and, and things right. like that. Because obviously you have got to, promote to an extent because you want mm -hmm. people to buy the product yeah you want people to buy your products <laughs> <laughs> yeah so having that kind of three different you know styles of video can be really mm -hmm. helpful yeah um yeah so has anyone got any questions we've got about um uh, 15 minutes left so if anyone has got any questions feel free to pop them in the comments um so we have got a little quick fire kind of round okay. um, so I've got a few questions that you just need to kind of answer in like a little summary um, okay. a couple of them have slightly been covered so I might just take those out um, okay. so we've done that <laughs> it is um, like minus 38 here today so I am yeah it is so cold so I'm like <laughs> Uh, you can't see but I'm like snuggled up in a blanket <laughs> and like it is so cold here right now oh well it's like pitch black here because obviously <laughs> you know in the evening now and I was setting off the ring light and I thought oh god I hope people can see me um so yeah. I put all the lights on in the house so <laughs> like I'm gonna turn the lights off yeah the sun is like shining here so it like appears to be really nice when you look outside but then it's like we have like an extreme cold warning right now Oh, really? Oh, no. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So my quick fire is ready. Okay. So uh, what is a business podcast that you would recommend? Oh, man. You know what? I, I don't really listen to business podcasts, but I really like okay. Jay Shetty. Because I feel like he's, like, so positive and has so many, like, tips for, like, just upping your self-esteem and your self-worth and, like, really, like, um, working on you. And I think making you better makes your business better. Yeah, 100%. Uh, what is your favorite TikTok trend? Oh, man, my favorite TikTok <laughs> trend. I love the routines. Like, I love when people show, like, their daily routine when they, like, make their coffee and make their bed and, like, yeah. spray their beds and, like, get dressed. I don't know. I love those ones. Yeah, no, I like them as well. Um, what's your number one tip for small businesses on TikTok? So we've had the top three, but what's your number mm -hmm. one? Number one tip to small businesses um yeah just like be authentic and post like what makes you comfortable and what makes you happy like if you're not comfortable posting the trends then they're gonna come across that way yeah like, we're gonna be able to tell that you're not comfortable doing them yeah 100 <laughs> percent. um what is the best style of content for best you style for me um probably like 
like I said, like posting about like the magnesium and then like um, putting somehow involving my kids in the posts. Those do really, really well for me. And then also like um, talking in the background, like voiceover. Yeah. Um, what is your number one tip for generating sales through TikTok? So trying to actually sell. Mm how it's going to benefit someone like what is this product going to do to benefit them or make their life better easier um how is it gonna you know if, if they have dry skin how is it going to make their dry skin better how if they have pain how is it going to help their pain so you really just like need to get across like how is this going to benefit your consumer yeah perfect well that was the quick fire oh that was easy <laughs> uh we've got a question from Layla's delicacies we are a gifting company so how can we make everyday engaging content gifting is seasonal so yeah obviously gifting is seasonal so with like Christmas coming up I'm sure you've got you know more ideas at the moment than maybe when it's not Christmas or it's not you know Easter or Valentine's Day and um, so kind of thinking about those events so after Christmas the next thing for you know for, for for me that I think of will be Valentine's Day so as soon as the Christmas hype gets over I'd start thinking about Valentine's Day pretty much straight away and start creating posts so although yeah there's not always a, a, you know a gifting season you know seasonal thing you can still look at the next one and start promoting for that um with Christmas like tapping into audience pain points is key for gifting companies so you know the closer we are getting to Christmas the you know the more stressed people are going to be if they've not got gifts yet um so saying things like um have you still not got a gift for your mom you need to buy one now you know here is our top three gifts gift ideas for, for moms and things like that um you know last minute stocking fillers um you know even if you were to promote like um you know the latest day that you could do next day delivery when it gets to that point have like a flash sale for like free next day delivery on all orders over like 20 pound or something um and thinking of different ways that you can engage people through through different like you know incentives and things like that um but i think educational content is key so educating people on how how they can shop gift wrapping um you know how to gift wrap um coming up with different like gift guides for specific people so it might be a gift guide for sisters you know husbands whatever fits into your target audience uh, creating gift guides and then also kind of tapping into the trends and um relating to customer pain points in the sense that you know if you've got a trend that could be applied to someone not remembering to buy someone a gift and you know things like that that can be a bit more funny and entertaining um they're the main things i'd try and do for a gift company there's also like birthdays and anniversaries and stuff like that so you can always like not in that busy season so maybe not like christmas valentine's day you can always be like you know is your anniversary coming up like you know and you could definitely do some funny ones with that like you know yeah. men forgetting their their anniversary stuff like that i think yeah there's definitely some fun stuff you could do with that yeah a hundred percent and depending on what products you actually sell um, something yeah. that I always like to do is, you know, like um, horoscopes and like birthstones and stuff. So like mm -hmm. typical gift ideas for an Aries and, you know, things yeah, like that. that yeah. It's always going to be someone's birthday who is, you know, always, yeah. horoscopes. So creating content uh, that can be evergreen and be posted throughout the entire year that's not specific to just one holiday. Um, well, if anyone's got any more questions, feel free to pop them on. Um, but that's kind of all my questions for you, Jill. So if you've got any more for me, feel free to ask. Um, but if not, that was that. That's everything. Yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> it's oh that's God. the like best thing about TikTok and like Instagram is like, you know, you're halfway across the world, and you know we're still able to connect. So I think that that like global community is really cool. Like being able to connect with people that you normally wouldn't connect with. Yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. We're only, like, we're an agency from Warrington, which is in the northwest of England. And I've got, got clients now from Australia, Canada, America. So it's crazy, really, how, you know, how one platform can get you, you know, out there to so many different people across the globe. Yeah. 
Um, so we've got some, Georgie, the hair braider said, I'm in hair care, any tips? Um, so by hair care, do you mean like you sell products that help hair or hair dressing? What's kind of, let's see if I can have a look. Oh, we can't. I'll just get it up on my phone, I think. I think again with hair, I'm just gonna pull your profile up, but with hair, kind of tapping into the pain points again. Oh, I sell products and I'm a braider. Okay. I'll just get your account up. Oh yeah, so I think for kind of the hair braiding and things like that, um, I can't see, Oh yeah, so like wigs and stuff like that. So I do style and videos showing people exactly what, you know, the products look like, um, how people, like tutorial style videos, how people can achieve different hairstyles, different hair looks, um, even things like, you know, what's the best hairstyle for, you know, people with red hair and people with brown hair and, and things like that that can directly impact someone and engage a, spe a specific person. Um, so showing the products in use, addressing pain points that could be, you know, do you struggle finding, you know, do you struggle with uh, coming up with hairstyle ideas for a Christmas party or something like that? And then you could show some some ideas for a specific event. Um, and then, yeah, I think kind of get ready with me is like you've done. Um, the routine style videos that me and Jill were talking about would work well for, you know, the, the hair industry. Um, you know, showing like a get ready with me morning routine. Um, you know, could be like washing the hair, drying the hair, styling the hair, everything like that. Putting, you know, styling it with the clothes that you're wearing, things like that. I think would be would be good. Jill, any idea? I think like hair tutorials are always so much fun to watch. So yeah. I think doing tutorials and how to how to make it easy, how to do this at home. You yeah, know, those are always fun. A hundred percent. Um, well, yes, yeah, so I, that's all the questions I think that we've got. Um, so a big thank you to Jill for coming on for episode three of Spilling the TikTok Tea. Um, next week we are joined by Fizz Wiz UK, which is a home fragrance brand. Um, they've got 50,000 50, followers on TikTok, so they'll be joined uh, joining us and we're going to be talking about TikTok shop um, more so. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to join that, keep an eye out on our socials and join our newsletter and we'll send out the link to register for that when we've set it up. Um, but yeah, so a massive thank you for you coming on and sharing your tips with everyone. Um, Thanks for having me. Really Perfect. Well, <laughs> thank you. And thanks to everyone who has joined and who's interacted. Um, me and Callum will be live on Thursday at 1pm. So you can join us there if you've got any questions. Uh, thank you for the feedback. Um, I'm glad that you've enjoyed. And yeah, so thanks very much. We'll, um, I'll chat to you soon, Jill. And I'll okay, see you soon. Bye. Bye.